Interesting. Thanks for the opportunity for um, to let us do this presentation. Um, it's really exciting, and we hope that the people uh, watching from home will enjoy it too. Um, we're here to talk about working with Siegfried Wikidata and Wikibase. Um, I have a shared document prepared, which I'll share the link to in the in the chat shortly. Um, and today we're going to, this is a little agenda, we're going to go through what Wikidata and Wikibase are, um, Siegfried's relationship to them, handle of demos, and we'll go through what you saw. Um, and there's a couple of thoughts and ideas from our side. Um, there's some questions um, at the end about the ecosystem, and then we invite you to provide your questions at the end, um, which we're also really looking forward to. Um, first, the introductions. Um, I think they're here. Uh, Ewan and Richard, they're somewhere in the chat. Um, they might wave hello in the chat. Um, uh, Ewan Cochran at uh, Yale University Libraries uh, was the product owner on this work, um, uh, sort of driving, driving its goal and purpose. Um, Richard, of course, is the creator of Siegfried and, um, you know, invaluable in, in his knowledge with his tool, but also in his format knowledge and the, the format development ecosystem. Um, there's myself, uh, software developer, I get around a bit, I'm currently at a, a book and publishing company called Ravensburger here in Germany. Um, you may know them from UU, you might not. Um, but yeah, I'm a digital preservation specialist here um, and I've been around the format community for a while. And finally, Kat, who I'll let introduce themselves as they're um, going to introduce Wikidata and Wikibase for us. Um, but just before I do that, I just want to say it was uh, such a great privilege to work with everyone on this project. Um, and I, I, I really appreciated the time and engagement that they gave throughout the, the last, um, what is nearly two years now. So thank you all. I also work for Yale University Library, and I've been contributing to Wikidata since the beginning of the project, and um, very happy to collaborate with Ross and Richard and Ewan on this, and a big thank you to Ross for reusing data from Wikidata that we've been putting in for years now, and it's wonderful to see it um, actively being reused in Siegfried. So many of you may already be familiar with the various language versions of Wikipedia. And of course, the Wikipedias are just some of the projects under the umbrella of the Wikimedia Foundation. And uh, there's everything there from a crowdsourced dictionary, Wiktionary, uh, to a crowdsourced travel guide, Wikitravel. And of course, Wikidata the knowledge base of structured data that anyone can edit. Wikidata is machine readable linked open data. Anyone who has access to the internet can edit Wikidata. It's designed to support both human and algorithmic curation. And what I mean by that is that I, as a human user, can edit through the web UI, but it is also suitable for bulk contribution uh, through the API. And it is a fully versioned wiki. So just as you're familiar with the Wikipedias, every page in Wikidata also has an associated talk page. There are periodic dumps of all of the data in Wikidata. So previous versions of Wikidata are still available for consultation and use if needed. Today we're also talking about Wikibase. And um, because Wikibase was first used for Wikidata, uh, sometimes there's uh, confusion and um, inconsistent usage uh, of how people refer to Wikibase and how people refer to Wikidata. But Wikibase is the software used by Wikidata that lets us store manage and access the structured data in Wikidata. And Wikibase is built on the, it's an extension of the MediaWiki software platform that is used for many Wikimedia projects. And uh, Wikibase has uh, two main parts, um, uh, MariaDB, which stores the JSON data, and then 
uh, that JSON data is transformed, serialized into RDF, and then loaded into a Blaze Graph backed Sparkle endpoint for uh, querying and um, use in the Wikidata query service. If you'd like to get a sense of who is using Wikibase currently, you may want to consult the Wikibase registry. And the Wikibase registry is not totally exhaustive. It's just a, a voluntary participation. If you manage a Wikibase, you're welcome to add it to the Wikibase registry, but not every single instance of Wikibase has already been added to the Wikibase registry. But this can give you at least a partial uh, view of who is using Wikibase and uh, you can explore their Wikibase instances to get a sense of what they're doing, how they've set up their properties and um, what kind of content they have in their Wikibase. There's a document linked here from these slides uh, called the Wiki Library Manifesto. And this is an overview of uh, current reuse of Wikibase in library institutions. And uh, the last link here is the strategy plan for 2021 for Wikibase. This is the official strategy plan of Wikimedia Deutschland, the German chapter of the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, and the German chapter of the Wikimedia Foundation is not only where Wikidata originated, it is also where Wikibase was created and uh, where the developers that maintain Wikibase are employed. So the Wikibase Strategy 2021 guide is a great place to get a sense of uh, what the plans are for, uh, I mean, 2021 is almost over now, but here you'll find port pointers to where you can keep up to date with um, the ongoing developing plans for Wikibase. Uh, in 2020, Ewan Cochran contacted Marco Pontello to ask permission to import data from TRID into Wikidata. Marco was agreeable to this plan, and Marco also provided uh, feedback on the proposed structure of this TRID data that would be imported into Wikidata. And then we imported uh, many records from TRID into Wikidata, greatly increasing the number of file formats that are described in Wikidata. And when we imported the data from TRID, we also brought in the signatures that Marco had collected in TRID. So um, there are now more file format items in Wikidata that actually have signature information on them. Some of the other sources for signature information for file format items in Wikidata now are Pronom, of course, uh, Gary Kessler's signature file, and uh, there are also a few other sources. So this, uh, after the import of TRID data, there are now more than 13,000 file format items in Wikidata. And um, what is great about having all of these items in Wikidata is you can get a sense of how file format signature information is structured in Wikidata. Let's just take a look at one here. This is the Feather file format. And this is just a screenshot of a partial set of the statements on this item. And you want to look here at the file format identification pattern statement. And particularly, these three qualifiers that are used in combination with this property file format identification pattern. So these qualifiers are encoding, offset, and relative to that give more information about the structure of the signature itself and the value for the file format identification pattern is right here. So um, most of the file format signature data that is in there now um, is coming from other sources. 
But as we'll talk about in a little bit, you could also contribute signatures that you have developed to Wikidata yourself. And uh, now that we're talking about signature data coming in from a lot of different sources, this brings up the question of data quality. Um, there are a few different strategies to increasing the data quality on Wikidata. Uh, there's a system of constraint violation warnings. The constraint system is uh, found in the user interface and um, a series of icons show up on statements after you've edited them if there is a constraint violation. And then if you hover over the icon, you can get additional information about the type of constraint violation that the system is alerting you to. And then you can take action uh, if you decide it's appropriate. These constraint warnings are recommendations. Uh, they are not enforced. You do not have to make the changes that are recommended here. So um, another way to ensure data quality is uh, to validate entity data from Wikidata against a schema. And uh, there is a system in place for performing this type of validation in the Wikidata system itself. And um, the schema namespace, which is namespace E, is built on the shape expressions language, which is commonly known as Shex. So Shex is a formal modeling and validation language for RDF graphs. And it allows humans and machines to communicate unambiguously about data assets. If you'd like to learn more about Shex, you can get more information here. But let's talk about Shex specifically being used on Wikidata. So um, anybody can contribute a schema, which is basically a representation of a data model, to the E namespace on Wikidata. And then these schemas can be used for validation of entity data from the items and properties in Wikidata. And uh, the way this works is um, if you go to the ename space and you find a schema and you'd like to test items for conformance to that schema, you can use the Shex2 simple online validator there are links to this already preloaded in the schema namespace. And then you use a Sparkle query to pull out all of the items that you want to test the conformance of. And then you'll get a report from the simple online validator about which of these items are in conformance with the schema, which are not yet in conformance, and also some details about uh, which triple patterns were not in conformance. So additional information at the statement level about uh, where the non-conformant data was found. So we have a check schema for file formats with an identification pattern. This is schema E237. And you can find this in the Wikidata schema namespace. And here you can see the structure that is expected for a file format item that has a file format identification property statement on it. And in this way, you'll be guided to make sure that you are using all of the qualifiers that are expected and that the values for those qualifiers are uh, of the data type that is expected. And uh, you can test data against this schema to find out which file format items are currently in conformance with this schema and which are not yet. So if you have developed a signature that you'd like to contribute to Wikidata, it is possible to create a Wikidata account for yourself and contribute that schema. If you don't want to create a Wikidata account, you could also edit via your IP address where 
you're not editing from your account. And so the system will just record your IP address in association with that edit. Um, if you are adding a signature to a file format item that already exists in Wikidata, then you just add that statement, just as we saw on the feather file format item example a few minutes ago. Or if you're adding a signature for a file format that is not yet in Wikidata, then you would just create a new item for your new file format and then add the signature information in the file format identification pattern statement. And uh, please remember to use the three required qualifiers. And then uh, for fun, once you have added your new signature information to Wikidata, you could even test the conformance of your item uh, against the schema for file formats with the file format identification pattern. There are a few ways you can do that. You can either use the online validator that I just was speaking about, but there's also a Wikidata user script that if you enable that user script, um, you can, uh, the, the script will present you with a box in the UI. And uh, if you're on a brand new file format item or any for file format item that you wanna test the conformance of, you can just type in E237 or 327 for the schema. And then um, it will tell you right there in the UI if the file format item is in conformance with that schema or not. So that is a user script that you can enable in your account optionally if, if you'd like to. And then the final way that you can contribute is uh, through wikidp.org, which is hosted by the Open Preservation Foundation. And um, in wikidp.org, you can use this property checklist so that um, you'll be guided through the statement creation process that once you enter your value for file format identification pattern, then you'll be prompted to add the three qualifiers. And in this way, you don't have to um, remember which qualifiers are required and uh, you'll have a little bit more support in the item creation process. So now I'm going to turn it back over to Ross to talk about how Siegfried is using the data that I was just discussing. So thank you, Kat, I really appreciate that. And the context was really useful. Um, Given all that work that um, Yale, Cat and Yale University have been doing um, up until now, we really wanted to get that information out of Siegfried, out of Wikidata and, 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 and make it usable. Um, and so Siegfried provided a natural fit for that. And that's something that um, you and identified and, and made contact with Richard to, 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 to talk about. Um, Siegfried is modular and it has different identifiers, which we recognize as a pronom identifier or the Library of Congress identifier. Um, and there's mime info, tigre, and free desktop as well. They enable uh, Siegfried to basically consume a signature and then use it to perform identification on, on, a, on a binary file format. Um, if we create a, an identifier for Wikidata, then the, the goal of that identifier is that it has to satisfy a number of interfaces that Siegfried exposes that makes that possible, makes this possible. Um, and, and, and loosely speaking, those interfaces enable the harvest of the, the information from Wikidata itself, building a, a binary based signature file, and then using, allowing Siegfried to then reconsume that signature file um, for its identification. Uh, code required is really along the lines of application side configuration, and then Roy and Siegfried, which are both complementary tools. We mostly hear about Siegfried, but Roy's needed to make a lot of the, um, the important things happen with um, signature files. Um, Roy is the component of Siegfried that manages signatures. Uh, it helps users to manage them and combine them. So you can run, um, there's a way of downloading a deluxe signature file right now off um, itforarchivists.com. I think it's .com, I could be wrong. Um, that um, allows you to run Pronom next to Library of Congress um, and, and free desktop and Tinker as well. So you can see all the different identifications come up in a single report. 
And that's enabled by Roy. Siegfried then consumes that um, and it uh, basically does the identification that I think a lot of us on, the, uh, on this meeting today are, are gonna be familiar with. Uh, and it uses the signature file to identify file formats and return um, uh, at the very least an identification or non-identification um, plus metadata about that. Um, so in this diagram, it's just for uh, people like diagrams. I'm not very good with them myself, um, but you can in the top, um, see if my mouse works, in the top um, left corner here, uh, you can see, um, well, let's start in the middle with Roy. Roy downloads um, a Sparkle result from the Wikidata query service that's combined with um, Wikimedia information um, for, uh, which, from a tool called Wikibraph. Uh, it passes that and then stores all that information in a signature file. And if you look on your hard disk, that would be under um, default.sig in the Siegfried home directory. Um, and you can see here it's stored at home, use a Siegfried, uh, expand Siegfried into its forward. I just use SF as an abbreviation here. Um, and it's stored, uh, the definitions file stores them as plain text. And then um, the default.signature file is the sort of binary um, compiled version that Roy creates. Siegfried then reads that and when you scan your files uh, on also on disk, you'll get a report if um, the identification is matched. Um, one of the things I wanted to do with the development was try and make it uh, clear to others how they could also create an identifier for themselves if they wanted. So we've um, largely in a, the, in a single commit, uh, the caveat being bug fixes and anything else we've added since, you can see a lot of the changes needed to create an identifier at this link here. Um, and there are developer docs here. Um, if you wanna have a look at how, 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 the, how, uh, uh, how get a better idea of the overview of uh, creating an identifier. Um, so from Wikidata to Siegfried, we download by connecting to a Wikidata query service. We pass the results of um, the Sparkle query, um, so essentially translating into a structure that Siegfried can use. Um, we um, store that data and then we use that data for identification. The Sparkle, um, I shouldn't be throwing the word Sparkle around as if everyone knows what it is. Sparkle is a query language um, that is used to um, talk to a um, triple store um, and it, it, you essentially ask the triple store for a, the shape of a graph um, based on an, a different types of variables that you want sent back to you. Um, and in our case, we, we're interested in things like the PUID, the MIME type, um, file extension, and of course, signature information. So we ask the Wikidata query service for that information. It gets returned back to us um, and then we can consume it in any way we want. Um, this is uh, just a screenshot of that query and a screenshot of some of the results. So uh, we'll do a quick demo. Um, this is a, a cue for me to tell you there's some more information next, but that information is, yes. Um, the, uh, we did a presentation at iPress. Um, the video is available on YouTube for you to have a look at. There's some important context there that you call interesting context. Um, when the um, iPress papers are out, um, I think there's a lot of context there that I think folks will find interesting. And I think between this presentation and those uh, two other um, assets, then I think there's, it, it creates a more complete story about everything that's gone into making this happen and, and the things that you might want to consider. Um, and also importantly, um, I don't want it to go unsaid, what the relationship of this work is to Pronom. Um, now, um, everything you see from here on out, none of it is intended to replace Pronom. I think, it, like Siegfried itself comp complements droids, um, Wikidata can complement Pronom. It, 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 it might give people more flexibility in, in trying out signatures. It might give people some options in terms of getting um, yeah, about trying things out and then pushing them to Pronom. It could be a pipeline to Pronom. Um, and it's really vital that Pronom continues in its capacity as an authoritative source for form and identification. Um, I think 
what is it now? Uh, 20, 20 years later, it's still showing how important it is to everyone in the community. Um, and I, we, we have reached out to David um, and the Pronom team, at, first of all, at the beginning of this development and um, just before this presentation as well. Um, and I, you know, I, I think they've seen all the iPress stuff um, just to make sure that I think that relationship is kept intact, that there isn't any attempt to um, assert what they're doing because um, it's really great. Um, so demo one, um, we're going to connect to Wikidata. Uh, um, I've got a couple of um, canned commands here. Um, we described uh, we described a harvest build um, identify process. Um, I'm not going to harvest Wikidata right now because it takes roughly three to four minutes because of what happens is it doesn't now just get Sparkle results back from the query service. We also remix it with provenance information from Wikimedia itself, and that takes a little bit of time. Um, in future, there might be ways to multi-thread that, uh, but right now it's single thread. I think it's single thread process. It just takes a bit of time. Um, um, so hopefully this will work for this window. Um, what have we got? Roy build Wikidata, Wikidata debug, and no pronom. Um, so this tells us we want Roy to build a Wikidata signature file. We want to have debug information, um, and we don't want to mix it with pronom signatures um, because Siegfried has the, the ability to um, augment signature information from another source with anything that matches uh, uh, PUID in pronom. Um, it, it, I think it helps fill in gaps when there are gaps, or it helps increase efficiency where in fish, uh, it's probably the wrong word, uh, uh, improve accuracy where accuracy needs improving. Um, so we're just building a signature file now, um, and we'll see this process. Um, it's taking a little bit longer than I remember, um, but um, we should see some uh, signature file made, and we should also see some debug messaging come out. Um, so hopefully it won't take too much longer. There we go. Um, so I didn't time that. Um, I think the build was definitely taking longer than anticipated there. Harvest should take about four minutes and I guess building takes maybe two minutes. Um, but we can have a look here at um, what we can see is we can see some debug. Um, we can see some debug information. Um, we can see we can see some logging information. We can see some debug information. Um, this massive list would not normally get output if you didn't have the, uh, the dash no debug flag. Um, we will uh, go through that in a moment. What what all of this means? Um, but we've successfully built a signature file. Um, it's stored in um, the Wikidata home, so Siegfried Wikidata. Um, yep, and we can see this is basically a plain text definition, a uh, plain text Sparkle result, um, and this is what's used to create a binary um, signature file that Siegfried can consume. And um, if we uh, run Siegfried on this test data folder, um, da -da -da -da. and then pipe it through less. Um, uh, we aren't getting, am I in the wrong folder? Okay, there's a chance that I have done something weird with my configuration for this demo. Um, but what we can see um, is we have a result from previous uh, in preparation for this meeting, which did work. Um, well, we can see uh, we can see an example here. For example, we have file name, test data, skeleton suite, uh, XFMT, XMT, these are eight, da da da. Um, the namespace uses Wikidata, so it tells us that we're using a Wikidata identifier. Um, we have an ID, the QID um, from the slug on the Wikidata IRI. Uh, it's been identified as Coral Draw format. We can connect to, we can talk, we can have a look at the, uh, we won't do it because uh, 
the screen won't be shared, but we can have a look at that. Um, we can click on here to have a look at that record in uh, Wikidata. We also have a permalink, which is a new feature that will be available, I think, in the new year, which allows you to see the record as it was um, when the signature file was created. And we can see there's an extension match and a byte match. And then that match came from Gary Kessler's file signature table. Um, and that was sourced on in, um, what is that? 8th of August, 2017. So linting, I really wanted to draw all of our attentions to because um, it, it will help us improve our work, but it'll help us get back to Wikidata as well. So the, the, the hope is that we become a community that participates with the Wikidata community. Um, and, it, and the linting first of all reminds us to get back to Wikidata. It tells us the different uh, quality issues that you might find with signatures in Wikidata that you have the opportunity to fix. Even right now, as we're talking, if you get bored, you can start clicking on these links and, for, and, 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 and fixing um, Q26548590 to understand, to have a look at why the offset can't be passed there and, and maybe improve that data. Um, the, there are various different linting messages. Um, I believe I've captured them all here, um, although it's something that I, I hope to improve on in the next year. Um, for example, we have uh, error, cannot pass offset for this record. Um, I happen to know that it just means that someone's entered the value no value for the offset when it's expecting an integer. Um, linting, warning, no provenance. This might be one way of improving. Um, if we can figure out the provenance of the signature, it just uh, enriches the metadata that's returned. Um, there's different errors here. So error, bad heuristic. Um, that means that a signature has probably not been committed to file for this because um, for whatever reason, SIGFree can't work out how to consume the data in Wikidata. So for example, it might have two beginning of file sequences um, that it can't figure out um, the provenance, which way round they go, and, and so forth. Um, I, it's something to look at. It's something I really want to draw your attention to if you go away and try this stuff out, um, because it, it will help us allow uh, to improve Wikidata, but it will also improve the signature ecosystem for all of us. And it's about giving back to Wikidata as well. Um, we we touch on this in the, um, the iPress paper, but um, th this paper that I read recently, um, I can't remember the journal right now, um, but uh, Babcock, Hamblin, Jorson and McCormick, uh, Rusty Rogue, uh, Kuriger Sweeter and Kitchen Tillman both uh, have this um, lovely passage in it about what we should be doing and endeavoring for as we work um, with Wikidata. Uh, but this line especially, that we must participate as members of the Wikidata community, uh, not colonize and exploit it to our own ends, which I think would be really easy to do um, if, if, um, if we didn't take care. Um, we also saw metadata return from in our results. You have the QR, QID and the IRI. Um, so the, the, the link back to Wikidata plus the QID that Wikidata asserts um, is the identification result. Um, we can see uh, if there are multiple MIME types, then we would see multiple MIME types here for, for that file. Uh, we can see the provenance of the byte match. So in this case, a different provenance just solved the file format problem um, on the 4th of August, 2020. Um, if we ran this command, Roy inspect Wikidata for, um, for, a, for an ID that I know exists, uh, you can see um, the byte, uh, how the byte match was uh, created that Sigfried uses. Um, but you can also see provenance information. So you can see who last changed this record. And, um, uh, you can see uh, a bot has changed one. The, the very last change was made by bot. Um, uh, uh, someone called Local edited it. Um, I did uh, twice um, and also Kat um, did some editing. Um, and you can get that information out for every record. Uh, you can have a few. One of the things that you can do with SigFeed and Wikidata is start having fun with other metadata. Um, so this is just one demo that I don't think will make it into the final version. But um, uh, if the signature, if the information exists in a signature file, uh, then you can write the changes to SigFeed that allows it to return in the results um, more information uh, that you might be interested in. 
Um, and so for this new executable, I was able to return the different software that um, I think can, um, can run this type of executable. Uh, so we've got Windows 8, 7, 98, and 10, which makes a lot of sense. But um, you could probably run this, you can run this example code, um, compile it and run it uh, and see what comes up for all the other different formats if you want it. Um, and, it and this is to ask you to think about the, uh, other fun you can have with um, creating and improving or enhancing the secret Wikidata identifier. Um, there's a, the, in fact, there was a, a recent issue submitted to the Droid issues yesterday about how to additionally provide information on format type and classification. So maybe whether something's a, a bitmap or a vector graphic or a text file or markup language and so forth. Um, if that information exists in the signature file, then you can do something with it. Um, it does require some changes to secrete, but hopefully um, that previous uh, com set of commits, um, pull request um, plus, plus um, what you've seen about Sparkle can help you get that out. The signature file is uh, split into two. So you have the Sparkle results uh, at the top of the file, and then you have a separate section for provenance. And that provenance just describes the record um, pretty much as it was downloaded. Um, so the as uh, as this record for Q1 da, 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 was downloaded, you know this should describe the, that record as it was downloaded um, within reason, as long as there were no changes made in the last three minutes um, while the rest of the results were being downloaded. Um, so um, you can get provenance information for how signatures have been updated by the community. And I think to some people that's really important um, to have a look at and to get a better idea of where their signature sources are coming from. Um, and so you, you might wanna have a look at that in more detail. Okay, so I'm sharing everything right now. Um, we've got chat notes here, Wikidata uh, query service here, um, Wikidata results. Um, what I really want is this. Um, this is a custom wiki base that I'm running. Um, in it, we have a couple of different items. Um, essentially, all the items needed to, um, uh, to describe a file format. So we can describe a file format, pronom internal signature is the encoding we'll use for file format signatures. Um, we, have, um, we have different properties, which we can look at as well um, by listing the properties. So these are the various different properties we have associated with a file format um, that we want to create a, a format identification from, uh, a record that we want to create a format identification from. Um, and we can see, um, for example, I've created a file format F2FF, FF2FF. Uh, file for, it is a type uh, file format, has a MIME type, um, it has a file extension, um, and it has a, the format identification patterns, beginning of file sequence BASC and um, BA5V and end of file BA11 base form. Um, and because this is a, a wiki base, we can um, talk to it and get uh, Wikidata query results from it. Um, and um, I think we can have a quick look at what those look like. Uh, um, uh, we can see, yeah, just a couple of different formats in here. And we can then run, uh, I've got a special compiled version of Roy here. I can do Roy. Um, let's see, I let's try not to make any mistakes. We can run a similar command to what we did previously. Uh, and we can see, um, a much more concise version of the results because there's so there's much there's fewer uh, records in here. We have two linting errors um, just as a demonstration. Um, and we can see that um, uh, and we've downloaded basically a, a, a signature file from Wikidata. And if we do Roy build Wikidata, um, uh, which is what I did. Sorry, um, what I should have done first was Roy harvest but I haven't got the command, I don't think. Uh, it's this command. Okay, there's the harvest job and you already got a preview of the, the build job. Um, and then we can um, uh, run Siegfried. Um, And 
and we can see the uh, my records. Uh, my we have a um, my file format FF two FF um, has been identified. FF one FF has been identified. Um, and flexible image transport system has been identified. Um, there's a couple of things I need to configure better um, around, um, around Wikibase, but if we click on here, we can get to a permalink for that record. And we can see here um, the, the, the different labels for this, including um, Library Congress FDD 000337. And this data has just been taken from the Library Congress um, FDD website. Um, and the file and the byte encoding has been added here. Um, and so now we can um, we can store, uh, as Wikidata does, we're storing uh, Library of Congress information in a Wikibase. We have a way of connecting to that Wikibase, downloading the information and using it to do perform format identification. Um, and finally, we'll just go back to the presentation um, and just very quickly have a look at what we saw there um, and then summarize, wrap everything up so that there's some time at the end for some questions. Um, so you can query a custom wiki base um, and you can get uh, format identification information from a wiki base if you want. You can set up one too. So the Library of Congress example, it, it might give them, for example, a way of um, making their registry more active, although Siegfried does have a connector to it. But one might be interested in setting up a wiki base because it might be interesting to model your work in wiki base and help smooth its import and it, the pipeline to getting that data elsewhere, for example, into Wikidata proper. Um, the, and there are ways to set up Wikibase quite easily. Um, so you can, you can do this quite quickly um, and start using your own signatures if, um, with a custom Wikibase if you want. And then perhaps think about contributing them back to Wikidata and also Pronom. Um, there's lots more we can model to, and, and that might need a custom wiki base for you to, to think about doing that, but also we need to do it in Wikidata anyway. Um, container identification still needs working out. Um, there is different connection, there's different way patterns that you can adopt for connecting to Wikidata. So for example, using a broker to uh, create um, pronom signatures that you download from another web service um, so that Droid can be compatible with Wikidata. Um, the, um, there are other uses for Wikidata that you might be inspired to, 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 to look at. Um, there are limitations in the community. For example, I found it difficult to identify the best ways to get support. Um, the, the Wikidata, Wikibase model feels new and it feels different um, to what I'm used to at least. Um, and configuration takes a bit of time, at least the first time. Um, you might take old ideas. And so I had this idea once upon a time, I'm using it for characterization. And again, there's a related issue here in Pronom about, um, yeah, about getting more information out of a, a byte sequence, such as whether something is encrypted or there's password protection. And now if a byte sequence exists for a file format um, that, that describes its characteristics, then you can encode that in Wikidata in a different record and say, here is, uh, format 18 with encryption or FMT 134 with an ID3 tag. Um, uh, and there are things that there's other to do, such as fixing up the linting that we've seen, um, and making that a little bit more consistent and communicating a little bit more about what that means, understanding the priority style matching that is used in Pronom, whether that's desired or not. Um, multi part signatures is something Kat and I will talk about in the new year, as where signatures come from multiple different sources and don't necessarily blend well to help us create an identification. Um, and there are optimizations such as adding filtering, perhaps you're already interested in certain format types. Um, there's some signature development links, we'll send the slides around after this, um, but yeah, please take a look at everything you can around format um, signature development. Um, uh, there's a pronom group to interact with, a droid group to interact with, with um, Pronom have just released their own research repository that, that you should all um, engage with if you can. If you have um, there's other play ways to record format information that can end up in Pronom or Wikidata, such as the Just Solve It Wiki. Um, there's information here around setting up Wikibase, including the commits I use to set up my uh, sort of bare bones setup. Um, Matt Miller had some has a great uh, YouTube tutorial 
uh, which I think is largely still up to date because it's what I used, it's what I followed to set up a wiki base um, and it's super helpful and it was really great to see that there. Um, and in the future, one of the most exciting changes is going to be a wiki based cloud, which is actually a, 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 had a, a precursor a WB stack, um, which allows basically a pre which creates a pre-configured wiki base for you that you really only have to do a little bit of configuration of to make it your own. Um, but check that out in January, especially if you're interested in running your own, trying to get your own identifiers out of your own mini registry. Um, and then lots of other wiki-based links. I really recommend this OCLC report. You might want to look into wiki-based groups like the WB stakeholder group. Um, although it's a, there's an interesting model there. It's sort of partially, it's, it's more closed than it is open, but a lot of their work ends up in the open. So yep, have a look um, pretty carefully. Um, and Rizome, uh, who are involved in the WB stakeholder group are also looking at, um, other digital preservation um, aspects, uh, especially using Wikidata, but also check out their R base um, implementation of Wikibase as well. Um, and concluding remarks, please continue to engage with this work. Thank you for turning up today. Um, uh, we look forward to your questions in a moment. Um, and um, yeah, have a think about what else you can do and, and, um, and keep talking to us about things that we can do as well. Um, I, I think there's a lot of potential here. Uh, with Siegfried, obviously with Siegfried, but also with Wikibase and Wikidata too. Um, so nearly finally, just, yeah, please, once again, th uh, thank you for your questions in advance and thank you for your engagement today. There's a question from Lindsay. Um, I, I know when you demonstrated the build, it was without the pronoun data, but I know you mentioned augmenting data. What would it look like to use Wikibase alongside pronoun right now, um, if that is advisable? And how are things re reconciled? Um, the, the 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 summary, Lindsay, is that um, it will uh, in the provenance field it will say it came directly from um, it, something like it came from pronoun proper, um, and there are signatures in Wikidata that have also been sourced from pronoun. Uh, and the message there is something like sourced from proper pronoun. Um, I'm not. I don't know off the top of my head. Is it advisable? Totally. It's it's written, you know, it, it um Siegfried has the ability to um, understand the priority information there. Um, and I think sometimes you will find a more accurate result. Um, but you also have the benefit of maybe better coverage because of how how much is covered with Wikidata as well. Ewan says, so if you pull from Wikidata only. With the dash no pronoun flag, you should get the pronoun signatures that are in Wikidata. It's <laughs> slightly counterintuitive. Yeah. Um, when it comes to preserving software to access certain file formats, different identifications from different systems might necess necessitate uh, the, the preservation of a necessary software. Uh, is anything being done about software validation by anyone? That's one I think you and can talk about. Hi. Um, so the question is, when it comes to preserving software to access certain file formats, different identifications from different systems may necessitate the preservation of unnecessary software. Is anything being done about software validation by anyone? Software validation. I'm trying to make sense of this to myself. Um, can Graham, can you elaborate on what you mean by unnecessary software? Could you give an example, perhaps? Uh, and, and also software validation. Um, is it validating that you have the right software to interact with the objects that you need to inter interact with? What we are looking into, um, and I posted about it on the DPC blog for a World Digital Preservation Day, is um, trying to develop signatures that could identify at least the creating applications of objects. Um, so you could associate those with the objects and um, potentially use those applications to uh, provide access to the objects in the future automatically um, using emulation. I'll add as well, Stefan Fritz, uh, um, the German um, uh, literature library, National Literature Library in Marbach um, has a tool that's connected to the is it NSRL, Software Registry? And I think you know about that too, right? 
and and that should help us filter out system software and unnecessary binaries. Um, I don't know if that's what you're looking forward to. Um, so anyway, I think um, that's about all we've got time for today. If you do think of any more questions, please do get in touch and we can pass them on to um, Ross and Kat. So just before we go, I'd like to say a huge thank you again to Ross and Kat for a really interesting presentation. And I, I do encourage you all to get in touch and uh, contribute in some of the ways that um, they've described. Um, and we hope to see you all soon. And thank you all for attending. <laughs> Thanks, Becky. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. everyone. Bye.